In the example we have worked with, Zoe and Amanda recognize their particular productive efficiencies and they decide to specialize in producing the good or services or a service where they are most efficient. In that example, however, what happens is that we only have an economy with two individuals and they make a trading arrangement one with the other. No money is necessarily involved. They barter vegetables for fish. Let's try to make the specialization example or the possibility for the benefits of specialization a bit more realistic. What we observe in the everyday economy around us is that people exchange their capabilities in return for money in a marketplace. So let's imagine that we have an economy with many individuals. So we will assume there are many individuals. And we'll think of Zoe and Amanda as being two of them. And we'll imagine that Amanda knows what her productive efficiencies are, and she decides at some stage in her life to become a gardener. Zoe likewise recognizes what her special efficiencies are, and she decides to become a plumber. Now, for the sake of the argument, let's imagine that these two live next door to each other. And Zoe and Amanda each knows the occupation of the other. Furthermore, Amanda and Zoe are each capable of performing a wide vari variety of tasks. So Amanda, who is a specialist in gardening by trade, is able to do her own plumbing work but she's not as efficient at doing the plumbing as Zoe is. Zoe, by the same reasoning, is able to do gardening, but she is not as efficient at it. Now, in our specialization model, what we showed was that if Amanda is a specialist gardener and Zoe is a specialist plumber, these two neighbors would do better if Amanda allowed Zoe to do whatever plumbing Amanda needs to do, and Zoe would be better off if she employed Amanda to do whatever plumbing needs, uh, whatever gardening needs to be done in Zoe's house. So we could have a barter arrangement where people negotiate over their back fence and they arrange to help each other out. In reality, we don't observe too much of this in the modern economy. What do we observe? What we observe is that if we go to the yellow pages or if we go to any advertising site, gardeners advertise their skills. Plumbers advertise their skills. So if a person such as Amanda, who is a gardener, needs to get some plumbing done, she is not restricted to dealing with her next door neighbor. She can search for a plumber through the media, employ one, and get her work done. And instead of trading gardening hours to the person she contracts with to get her plumbing done, what she does is she pays in income. So in the modern world, we have something somewhat similar to the bartering or the trading that could take place between neighbors who are specialized in different uh, capabilities. Except what happens in the modern world is that rather than the gardener and the plumber doing work for each other, what happens is the gardener goes into the marketplace, employs a plumber, and plays and pays the plumber money. Likewise, the plumber, when he or she needs a gardener, goes into the marketplace, finds a gardener, and pays the gardener a certain amount of money. How much money does the gardener pay? How much do money does the plumber pay to have work done? 
Well, in a certain sense, we have a terms of trade here because the gardener is paying a certain amount of money to have plumbing done and the plumber is paying a certain amount of money to have his or her gardening done. And the monetary cost of doing each of these tasks is similar to the terms of trade that we developed in the very simple model where we just had two individuals exchanging their labor.